Hello and welcome to an FPGA Vision Lecture. In this video we will have a look at the circuit design for an image processing application. And um, as a short look back, here is the algorithm that we want to implement. We want to detect lanes uh, on a street and for this we take a 3x3 three three regions of pixels in an image. So that's top, center and bottom row and uh, left, center, right column. On this 3x3 three three matrix we will then perform a Sobel filtering, which means we have uh, a filter matrix for x and another for y direction. We take the square of these results, uh, add them, take the square root and we get a value g, which is an indicator of um, an edge. So if there's a value of g, we have an edge. If there's a low value, uh, we don't have an edge. We want to visualize that by dividing this value g by 2 and subtracting it from 255, so edges uh, will become black and uh, the other parts of the image uh, will be white. To design the circuit we start with a blank sheet of paper and a pen. First we need line memories to store image lines so that we get the top, center and bottom pixel of the image. Then we have pixel memories so that we can have the left, uh, center and right pixel and we need this three times for the three rows that we have had earlier. Then we have the matrix of 3x3, three 9 three, pixel, and on this matrix we will perform the arithmetic for filtering. We have one arithmetic unit for horizontal filtering, and we have another arithmetic unit for vertical filtering. Both of them have six inputs and are connected to the respective pixels of the 3x3 three three matrix. The result of these two processings are then added. And we take the square root and have the output value. So this is the overall architecture. Let's have a closer look at the arithmetic. The arithmetic unit has uh, six inputs for the six values of the filter matrix. We have positive input 1, 2 and 1 and we have negative inputs minus 1, minus 2 and minus 1. And for this six inputs first we have to do a conversion of the RGB pixels to the luminance um, to Y. Then we have the two factors that uh, count double, so we make a multiplication by 2, which is just a shift in the binary representation. And um, then we have an adder and we can add the six values. The three values from the top have a positive sign and the three values from the bottom are subtracted, they have a negative sign. This is the result from the filter matrix. Then we have to square this value. We add the sum of the other filter matrix, which is not depicted here, it has the same structure. Then we take the square root and uh, we limit the output and subtract it, divided by 2 and subtract it from 255, so that we here now get the output pixel. So this is the overall structure of the arithmetic. As the next step in the design, we have to determine the representation of the different signals in our circuit. In the C simulation, uh, shown in an earlier video, we use floating point because that was easier to implement at this stage of the algorithm development. 
However, a digital circuit uh, should be implemented with fixed point because this gives much lower hardware effort. So our task is now to find out which is the proper representation for our signals. And uh, we do this by making certain design decisions. The first design decision that we have here is that we want to implement the luminance with 12-bit. This is the um, first approach. You can later optimize that. I leave this open to you as an exercise. The representation of luminance with 12-bit uh, means a factor of uh, 16 compared to the 8-bit representation of RGB values. We have here the floating point formula for converting RGB to luminance to Y. And uh, the factor of 16 to the floating point factors gives fixed point factors, which we take for our, our fixed point implementation. Now we can have a look at the next step in the processing. And in this diagram, you see the VHDL variable, which you find in the design files. We start with the pixel, which are in RGB and have 8 bit, so range uh, from 0 to 255, 8 bit unsigned. These are converted, as we just saw, to luminance by a multiplication. So we get a range of uh, 0 to uh, 4000, which is a 12-bit representation. And uh, we note that we have here a factor of 16 um, applied, so that we later have to um, divide by this factor again. Now we do the filter matrix with the different luminance values, and um, we have factors, we have positive factors, uh, plus 1 to 1, minus 1 to 1, um, so that the sum can be uh, have a value of plus minus 16,000. As we have negative values, we have a signed value here, 15-bit. Now we take the square of these values, we sum two of these values, which gives a range of, gives a positive range again, and the values can be up to uh, 500 millions, which would be a 29-bit representation. For the next steps in the processing, we uh, make another design decision, design decision 2, and uh, we want to implement the square root with the block ramps of an FPGA. We use an Intel Altera Cyclone 5, and uh, the block ramps in this FPGA have uh, an input address width of 13-bit. So therefore, uh, we decide that uh, the input to the square root shall be 13-bit wide. And the output is 8-bit because that's the value we need for the luminance value. So now we can have a second table of word width and range of signals. Output of the square root is 8-bit in a range of 0 to 255. Input to the square root shall be a value of 13-bit, so that we have a range of 0 to 8000. And this means that we interchange the order of square root and limiting. In our first architecture, we first had the square root and then the limit. To use all the 13-bit, it's more advisable to first make a limit of the range we have and then take the square root, so that we can use the full 13-bit range of the memory which means we have here the output of our previous table, which was in the range of uh, 500 million. And uh, we limit it and reduce the word width to have an input value for the square root. Using a ROM for arithmetic calculation is a very common practice. Here, let's have a look how we implement that. We can derive the content of the ROM with a spreadsheet. Um, here I use uh, OpenOffice Calc. So you have a spreadsheet with um, some header lines, plus then you have um, the ROM content, which is the input value, and here by a formula we calculate the value that goes into the ROM. And this file can be directly stored as a text file and used as a memory input file, a MIF file for the Altera design flow. With the conversion of the floating point calculations to fixed point, we have made changes to the algorithm. So, of course, we now have to verify, we have to check if the algorithm still performs the operation that we intend to. And we do this again by a C simulation. 
we had in the previous video a C file for simulating the algorithm with floating point. And uh, we now change this uh, C file to fixed point. This file is given to you. It's named lame underscore fixed dot C. You can have a look at it. And um, we make a simulation with uh, various test images again. And the result is that there is no visible distortion in the image. So apparently it can be accepted as a uh, representation of the algorithm. Let's have a closer look at the calculation with the C program. Here you have again a part of the input image um, and the corresponding part of the output image. Visually there is no difference, so there's no need to show you the uh, difference of the results. They are virtually the same. If you have a closer look, um, you can see small differences. I printed out some of the values here for the floating point algorithm. Um, you get at the position that is indicated here, the values shown on the left. So the luminance value that is calculated is uh, 165. And for the fixed point algorithm, you get slightly different values, which uh, due to different rounding has another luminance value of 164. This is a small difference, so the algorithms are not identical, but they are so close together that we can accept the fixed point algorithm. As a result, we now have the architecture for our circuit design. Here we have uh, line memory and uh, pixel memory to generate the 3x3 matrix. This is the tab uh, left top, center top, right top, and here left bottom, center bottom, right bottom. So the names indicate the position. The tabs are given to the Sobel matrix for horizontal and vertical filtering. And this region we have in some more details. In the second diagram, we have the RGB to Y conversion for the six input pixel, the arithmetic for combining them, taking the square of them and uh, adding it with the result from the other matrix. First, we now limit the value of the sum, then take the square root with a ROM. And in this diagram, you see the implementation of the RGB to Y conversion. The next step in the design are now writing the VHL file, simulating them and implementing them on an FPGA. And we have two separate videos on that for VHDL simulation and for FPGA implementation. But as a preview, I would like to show you here already the result of the FPGA implementation. To do this, we have here a video of uh, a street scene in Switzerland. And now we switch to the output of the FPGA. This is the result of a real FPGA implementation. And uh, you clearly see that the circuit detects the boundaries of the lane. So street boundaries are shown in black. It's clearly visible that this architecture, this, this FPGA is able to detect the boundaries of the street. This concludes this lecture. I invite you to have a look at the videos for VHDL simulation and FPGA implementation on a remote lab. I hope you find them interesting.